my name is Andrew. Welcome back to a brand new exciting vlog. Uh, well, it's not exactly a vlog. Welcome back to a brand new exciting video. For today's daily upload, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Last week, maybe two weeks ago, something like that, I uploaded a video about how to hyperlapse. If you guys haven't seen that video and you don't know how to hyperlapse and you're interested in filmmaking, be sure to check it out. I'll link it down below. Although you guys should check out that video, I felt like that video didn't adequately cover how to actually edit a hyperlapse after you've taken it. The reason why stabilizing a hyperlapse is so important and why I'm making an entire video really just about how to stabilize them is because really you can't have a good hyperlapse without stabilization. It is pretty much just as necessary as the actual act of filming the hyperlapse. You can try your hardest to align the points on the grid perfectly, but there are always going to be some form of shake in your footage. So if you just line the sequence of photos up in your editing software, bring them down to one frame and then play it, it's not enough. That's not enough for a good hyperlapse. You have to stabilize it. So before I hop onto the computer, let's go snag a couple more hyperlapses for us to use uh, to edit in this video. All right, guys. So before we hop on the computers and do the fun stuff of stabilizing and editing our hyperlapses, uh, what I need to do is actually get a couple of new hyperlapses. Uh, one, just because I need to get a few hyperlapses for a vlog that I'm filming. And then the other reason is just because I want to get a couple fresh ones for this video. So for the longest time, I've been trying to get a hyperlapse of my house. So that's my house right there and it's been really quite difficult for me to get a good hyperlapse of my house because there's a bunch of trees and poles and cars usually blocking my house. Right now there's really only one. But today I think I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I want to get two different hyperlapses for this video. One that's a little bit more difficult and then one that's a little bit more on the easy side. I'm going to sit down the camera and I'm going to start getting this hyperlapse. You guys can hear Tucker, you're really helping my audio right now. All right guys, so I'm back inside now and I snagged a couple of hyperlapses. I only got two. I've got the SD card right here. I'm gonna plug it into the computer. So the first thing that I like to do when I hop on to edit either time-lapse or hyperlapse is I like to open up Lightroom and just do a few tweaks in there real quick. Nothing too fancy. I don't use the tone curve, usually just light-ish tweaks. Okay, so here's what it looked like before, here's what it looked like after. I think I'm going to mess around with the colors a little bit more when I actually get into my editing software, but for right now this works, but now you can see a lot more of the sky, it's not so blown out, and it just looks a little bit better, at least in my preference. Most of the stuff that I'm doing is just personal preference, so just mess around with it. But now I'm going to select the first photo, the one that I edited, and then I'm going to go down, holding shift, and hit shift there. And then right here on this tab, it says sync, and I'm going to hit sync. Um, check all, and it's going to apply all of these to the rest of the photos. So it's pasting the settings, and boom, it just did it right there. So I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to export it to my desktop. I'm just going to call it House Hyper Lapse 1 Color Corrected. It's kind of long, but it's going into that folder. So now I'm going to export it. Alright guys, so just finished exporting. Uh, I'm pretty much done in Lightroom now, so I'm just going to shut Lightroom down. And then if we go to the desktop, we have all of the pictures of that hyperlapse, and there's 115. Alright, so I'm in Final Cut Pro, and I'm going to move over to my event called Hyperlapses. I'm going to hit Command N to make a new project, and I'm going to call this House Hyperlapse. Uh, I love Final Cut Pro's keystrokes for creating time lapses or hyperlapses with pictures. All you have to do is drag your photos in. I'm going to go to the folder with the pictures I exported out of Lightroom. I'm going to drag them in. I'm going to put the rate, which is the amount of pictures essentially per second, to 30. Now these photos are already selected, but if they aren't, just hit Command A. Then what you're going to want to do is hit Control D, and that sets the duration. You're going to hit 1, and that sets all the pictures to one frame, and then hit Alt G. And what that's gonna do is Alt G is the keystroke for a new compound clip, and then hit Shift Z, and that brings it all up. So now that we've got it aligned, what we have to do is stabilize it. But the thing about Final Cut Pro is it can't stabilize pictures. It knows right now that these are pictures, so essentially what you have to do is full Final Cut Pro and make it think that it's an actual video. So to do that, all you have to do is export your video. I'm gonna export it to my desktop in 1080p. Exporting technically does bring down the quality of your, your video a little bit, um, but it's pretty much necessary at this moment. The share was successful, so now 
we can start stabilizing this clip and this is where the magic happens. I stabilize all of my hyperlapses now in After Effects, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it in Final Cut real quick and then we'll hop over to After Effects and I'll show you how to stabilize it there. So I'm just watching it. If you just go fast, it looks pretty smooth. It's, just, it's such a cool effect, very cool, but it's still not stabilized. So all you have to do is select your video and you go over to this little sidebar and here's where you have all of the controls of your videos. You have effects, transform, crop, distort, and right here you have stabilized stabilization and to turn stabilization on you just click that little button and it is now stabilizing your video in the background tasks if you hit command 9 uh, like I said the background tasks show you what's going on in the background of Final Cut Pro so right now in the background it's doing transcoding and analysis of my shots so essentially what it's doing it's going frame by frame through the video and it's trying to figure out where it's shaking and then it'll crop in and try to get rid of that shake so as you guys can see it just finished and it cropped right in so Final Cut Pro has three different types of stabilization so I don't know what the differences are as far as how they work I just know they're different what I do is I just go through all three usually and see which one looks the best so we're gonna start off with automatic um, yeah that looks really bad no we don't like that so automatic is a no-go we're gonna go over to inertia cam inertia cam usually works better all right so that looks really wonky um, that looks a little bit better, but as you guys can see, we're getting some weird distortions. So automatic's better than that one. Automatic, I think, looks the best. I'm gonna pump up some of these. And I'm gonna do something that you're really not supposed to do, but I'm gonna do it because I think it's gonna help this a lot. I'm gonna go in, and I'm actually gonna export this footage again, but I think it's gonna be worth it to export this one again, simply because, uh, this just, it's just too, too choppy. I, I, I'm just not a fan of it. So I'm gonna do it one more time. So now we're gonna take the already smooth version and we're gonna stabilize that. Uh, yeah. So this is also gonna crop in on it some more, but we want some smooth footage. I'd rather have low quality smooth footage than high quality super shaky footage. So that's just personal preference, but yeah. That's a whole lot better. It's still not perfect, but it's definitely way better. You know what I'm probably gonna do is gonna go there, and then once it starts getting distorted, I'm gonna speed up that. So this will be a little bit different, just so I can kind of skip over it, so it's not as noticeable, I'm just gonna go. So I sped up the middle just so that the distortion isn't as noticeable, and now I'll play it back. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I'm satisfied with that. So it goes by pretty slowly, and then boom. So that is pretty good, I'm satisfied with that, and that is how you stabilize in Final Cut Pro. All right, so that's how you do it in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna repeat this process real quick with my second hyperlapse and see if it turned out any different. This one turned out a lot better than the house did. So let's play it back. This is not stabilized, and as you guys can see, it's just really shaky. So now I'm gonna turn the stabilization on, and now watch this. Look at that. But yeah, it's very smooth, it looks great. I actually used the inertia cam for this one. All right, so we're hopping into After Effects. I'm just gonna use the sequences that I edited in Final Cut Pro, but you guys can do the same thing in Premiere Pro. So now I'm loading up After Effects and we're gonna use the warp stabilizer. All right, so we're in After Effects, so I'm just gonna double click right here and this allows me to go through and pull up the clip I want. Since we're on the note of the tree, I'm gonna pull up the tree hyperlapse first. And now to drag this into the timeline, you just click on this little tab right here and drag it down to create a sequence. So here it is in your timeline, as you guys can see, it's super shaky, it's just not usable. But all we have to do is go over to the effects and presets tab, type in warp stabilizer, and then just drag it onto your clip, drop it, and now what it's doing is the exact same thing as Final Cut Pro, it's just analyzing the background frame by frame and going through, and then it's going to stabilize it. All right, boom, so it just finished, and now let's play it back and see what it did. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, that is magic. That is pure magic. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm stoked on that. So that looks really good. And to export it, what all you have to do is go up to composition, hit, hit add to render queue. It comes up here, hit lossless. And then you're just gonna choose what format you wanna export out of. QuickTime is what I want. And then we're gonna hit okay. I'm going to change this to V2, when you say smooth, we want to go to the desktop, we want it to be in MOV, that works, MOV, and now we're going to hit render, and now it's rendering through, and boom, and now I just heard the sound, that means it was successful in rendering out, and we can just go over to our desktop, because this was an MOV, it's going to have to be converted for us to play it back, but that's no problem, it only takes a couple seconds, it has rendered through, and now we can play it back, 
Boom, beautiful. All right guys, so just went through and stabilized that bad hyperlapse um, that Final Cut Pro is struggling with in After Effects using the warp stabilizer. This is without the auto align in Lightroom and check this out. Boom, look at that. We've got no, notice how there's no, there's no like weird distortion of the house. There's no wonky motion. Yeah, so I'm really stoked on how that came out. That looks really nice. We're just gonna do the same thing to export composition, add to render queue. It's definitely not perfect, but I am satisfied. All right guys, so that is pretty much it. That's what my editing process for hyperlapses looks like. Hyperlapses are one of, or the coolest form of photography and videography ever. They are so cool. As usual, be sure to subscribe if you're new. If you've never seen my videos before, I'd encourage you to check out my other videos because I make loads and loads and loads of different content on this channel, tutorials, vlogs, all that good stuff. So be sure to check it out. Uh, I think that is pretty much it. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.